Hi everyone and welcome to day 11 of our Vlogmas series. We're almost halfway there. If you haven't seen the previous videos, you can check them out on my channel. If everything looks good to you, then please consider subscribing to my channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make the very best chin chin recipe ever. To start, gather all your ingredients and then to a small bowl, you're going to mix the egg and the milk. I usually use evaporated milk for chin chin because it comes out richer, but you can use any milk you prefer, like whole milk or you can even use water. When it's combined, set the mixture aside and then to another bowl, you're going to add some flour, sugar, salt and nutmeg. You can also use powdered milk for this recipe. If you're using powdered milk, add it to the dry ingredients and then just mix the egg with regular water. Mix all the dry ingredients until combined and then add the butter. I usually use unsalted butter for most of my baking, but you can use salted butter. If you're using that, then omit or reduce the salt. You can also use margarine for this. If you're using margarine, you also need to reduce or omit the salt. Use your hands to mix the butter into the flour until it looks like breadcrumbs. When there are no huge chunks of butter left, make a well at the middle and then add the egg mixture. I forgot to add, you can make this recipe without the egg. Simply omit the egg and replace with 1 over 4 cup of water or milk. Mix the wet and dry ingredients until it comes together. The dough may look a bit dry at first, but just keep mixing and it will come together. If for any reason the dough doesn't come together or it's too dry, it could be as a result of the flour used. Simply add a little bit more water or milk until it starts to come together. On the other hand, if the dough is too wet or the dough is too sticky, add more flour until the dough looks right. Make sure you're using the correct measurements when making this. I'm going to provide the exact recipe in the description box. If you have a kitchen scale, use that and measure in grams and that will give you the most accurate measurements. After the dough comes together, transfer to your wok surface. Make sure you sprinkle flour before adding the dough. You can also sprinkle some flour at the top to make it easier to roll. Roll the dough until it's flat, depending on how thick you want your chin chin to be. I usually do about one centimeter or less, which is around the width of a regular pencil. When you're rolling, if you notice that the dough is shrinking back too much, it could be that the dough is overworked. So what you're going to do to fix this is just cover the dough before cutting and allow to rest for about 20 to 30 minutes. The rest time will allow the gluten relax so it's easier to cut without it shrinking too much. Next, go ahead and cut the dough into your desired shape. I usually just stick with the regular or the popular shape, which is the about one inch squares. I usually use a pizza cutter to cut because it's much easier and faster. If you don't have a pizza cutter, you can definitely use a knife. I'm going to provide the exact cutter I use and the link will be in the description box or you can check out my bio. If you're in Nigeria, you can get your pizza cutter from Kiki's Favorite Things on Instagram. While cutting, in between about two to three cuts, I usually dust my cutter with flour so the chin chin is easier to separate. Cutting is my favorite part when I'm making chin chin. I usually give myself a challenge to cut it as evenly as possible and it just really relaxes me. While you're still cutting, you can start heating up the oil. 
For Chin Chin, I always advise you use a deep pot because it needs to be deep fried. You can as well use a deep fryer if you have that. While the oil is heating up, I'm going to continue cutting the chin chin. This is just the leftover from the sides of the chin chin I cut earlier. So I've mashed everything together and I'm just going to repeat the same process of rolling and cutting. check on the oil we don't want our oil too hot or too cold when frying chin chin if you have a full thermometer you can use that the oil should be about 350 degrees fahrenheit or 175 degrees celsius if you don't have a full thermometer you can just test the oil by adding just a single chin chin in if it browns immediately the oil is too hot if it doesn't sizzle then the oil is not hot enough add the chin chin in wait for about 30 seconds and then go in with a slotted spoon and shake the chin chin around we're doing this for two reasons. The first one is to break apart any chin chin joined together. And the second reason is to make sure there is no chin chin sitting at the bottom of the pot so it doesn't become too brown. Fry the chin chin for about 10 minutes on medium heat. And when it's brown enough to your satisfaction, take it out. If you want very crunchy chin chin, you want to fry on a slightly lower heat so the chin chin comes out crunchier. Once the first batch is done, before frying the second batch, you can leave the oil to heat up again for about 2-3 to three minutes or use your thermometer to test the temperature of the oil. It should go back to 350 before you start frying again. One of the major problems people have when frying chin chin is the oil foaming up too much. To prevent that from happening, when you're on the third or fourth batch, when you add the chin chin in, don't mix it up like I'm doing now. Instead, just let it fry. You can use a fork or spoon to gently separate the chin chin so it doesn't stick. If you mix it up too much at the beginning before realizing and you notice the oil starts to foam too much, then you have to continue mixing and continue just turning it with a spoon so it doesn't foam out of the pot. Another thing, make sure that the oil is not all the way to the top of the pot. Instead, the oil should be sitting around half or less the height of the pot. When the chin chin is ready, take it out and immediately transfer to a bowl or colander lined with a paper towel. Make sure you don't leave it in the bowl for too long. Once the oil drains, transfer to a wider pan. I usually use a baking tray or a regular tray also lined with paper towel. Spread the chin chin around so it cools down faster. It should take about 30 minutes to 1 hour for it to completely cool. Once it's cool, transfer to a Ziploc bag or an airtight container. It should last for up to 2 weeks on the shelf but I doubt you would have anything left after 2 days. Make this for snacking or you can gift this to friends and loved ones. That's it for day 11. Make sure you're back here tomorrow for a brand new recipe.